In this video, I'm going to show you 12 ways of how you can export data from Power BI to Excel. And some of these include brand new methods, for example, how you can get a table, and also just some of my favorites that involve you just quickly taking a screenshot of it in Power BI and then turning that picture into data in Excel. Brand, brand new feature as well. So my name is Dave Benayman. I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Power BI, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. I love talking about the new stuff and I love talking about the rarely new features. So let's get going. Brand new, what you can do with Power BI is you can click on this kind of table and you can choose export data. And then you can choose, if you click summarize data, you can have a live connection. So I click export. It does create the file and I'm going to open it. And it doesn't look like it's done much. It looks like this with just column one. But if I see here, it says click refresh to update. So if I go to the data tab and I choose refresh all, I need to press OK. And here it is as well. And it is actually going to stay up to date. Now, if I want more control, I can go to the data tab and I can choose queries and connections. And this is actually the connection that's there. So I can double click it and I can see this and these tabs. And in definition, you have here the command text. And this is actually the DAX query that is being used. So you can actually edit this if you want to. For example, let's say that I don't like having the underscores under total kg sold. I can then edit it there and then press OK. And there you go. Now it's edited it here and it's, it's worked out. So some nifty features. And if you're into that kind of code, you can copy and you can paste it and edit it and see it as you want to see it. Now, if you have a data like this in a matrix with rows and columns, you want to export data and you have data with current layout or summarized data. Now, if you choose summarized data, then you have the option for that live connection, but you will get it just in rows and columns. Whereas if I want to get it as a matrix, I need to choose this. So just to prove that, click here. And then let's do the other one. So I'm now going to do just data with current layout, export. So four is current layout, which is going to look exactly like this. There you go, exactly like that. And if I go to the other one, three is going to switch it to now just be in rows like this. And if I choose refresh all, then I get it showing like that. But notice that it's unpivoted it from the original format. Uh, another way, and I think one of the coolest things that you've been able to do for a while, is if you are connected to this data set, you can say something like Ross, Rachel, Monica. I have spelt it wrongly, but that's okay. Um, and then I can go to the data tab and I can choose staff. And these are linked data types. So it has actually picked up Monica. And there is all the information about Monica. How cool is that? If I want to extract it, I can click on all of them and I can choose plus and I can choose, for example, costs or whatever aspect I want from this. Even the image, I can get the image to show up and make that a little bit bigger like that. So yeah, pretty nice, pretty cool. Uh, and you can get this. And I love this feature because it means that anyone anywhere in your company can look up information about employees, about stock quantities, if you had product codes, there's so much potential in this. So here I'm on Power BI Desktop and I have here the Dynasty and the Monarchs, the English Monarchs and how long they've reigned. And that comes from this data set over here with also the gender and the Dynasty. So what I want to do is bring this into Excel. So what I'm going to do is I need to go into the model view and go into that table. And then I need to click on the table and I need to choose a feature table on and then give it a description. So text a row label and this usually should be a unique column and then these should be the same. It's very rare that they're not. And from my experience, it gives you errors if they are not. It causes issues. So I've done that and then I need to publish it. So I'm going to click to open on Power BI Online. So here I'm in Power BI Online, and this is done to a workspace, and I'm going to click on the three dots, and I'm going to say, view data set. And in the data set, I'm going to see endorsement is blank. I need to give it a certified endorsement, so go to file and settings. And then here, I'm going to go with endorsement and discovery, and I'm going to go with certified. You need to do this in order to make it a data type in Excel. So click apply, and then it should be 
findable on Excel. So here I'm on any Excel file that could be made by anyone in the organization that has access to it. So in the data tab, you have these data types. And although you have the defaults, which are come with every Excel file, I also have these ones from my organization and English Monarchs is one of them. So if I write, for example, Elizabeth II and Charles III and Victoria, then I can select them and I can go here and I can choose an English Monarchs. And there it's done it. And I can go to the plus and I can look up their dynasty or I can even say equals this one dot and then give any of these a range from press enter and then control D to fill that down. So it works better if you're in tables in Excel, but that is a pretty cool thing that you can do. Now, if you're not seeing those, those options, then I need to show you later on in this video some settings that your admin has to do in Power BI Online. So other ways that you can get data from Power BI Online, are, there's two ways to get to the same thing. In the data tab, you have get data from Power Platform, and you can choose here from Power BI. Excel Consulting is my company name, so that's why it's showing me like that. So after I've clicked that, I can see the data sets coming up here, and I can click that to open it. I can click that to open to the data hub as well. And this is the tables using it and the number of reports using it. And I can click to go to any of those if I want to. Now I'm going to insert a pivot table from this. This whole thing might take a little bit of time to load. So I have my measures over here and I have my uh, things over here. So what I can do is I can just use it like a regular pivot table. So if I want extras and concerts, I can click on that. Or I can even choose this numerical field and it can put it in there. But you can drag a numerical field from rows into values if you have the insider's version, although that's coming to everyone else in Microsoft 365. So these are some kind of things you can do. And you also have dates. And the dates will recognize them as dates in the newer version. There you go. So it's recognizing them as dates. So really, really nice. And this is a great way that you can connect to Excel data. You can also get to the same experience from Insert Pivot Table and from Power BI. This will also load up this. And you can also do this in Excel for the web. So here I'm in Excel for the web and in the data tab, I also have these things like English Monarchs works the same as I showed you earlier. And in insert, I have pivot table from Power BI and this will also load up the same experience. Great, so that is some really cool ways that you can get it showing live connections, but sometimes you just want to copy and paste something from Power BI just to quickly analyze it in Excel. And that is a really, really important thing that I'm going to show you because my preferred method is I guarantee you not going to be the method that you regularly use. So let's look at that. So over here, what I can do is if I want this kind of table, let me drag that up here. And then what I can do is I can click on there and I can choose export data. This is a very, very inefficient method because you have to choose a name for it. And then you have to navigate to it. I'm going to do that outside of video. So here it is. Notice it's a CSV file. And I have also unpivoted it. So that might not be what I want. But it does get you the results this way. It's just very, very slow. And I don't like it. I wish you could just copy it. But there are things that you can copy. But that's not one of them. Click on, say, a column. I can right click. And I can choose to copy. And I can copy selection or copy value. I'm going to copy selection. And this is quite interesting when you paste what it does, because it actually gives you something that's very different to what you had before, which is name of all of the columns unpivoted and then just that column there for that one. So it's done that just for potatoes. It hasn't done it for the rest because that was my selection. So it's not incredibly convenient, but it is a way to do it. Of course, you can right click and you can choose copy value as well. And copy value will control V just take the value. It won't give you the headers. So the way that I like to do it, and this is really, really just unconventional, but I think this works pretty great, is I take a screenshot, Windows Shift S, and draw around it. Much better than a print screen because it takes only that. Then the data tab, you have this thing called picture and for picture from clipboard. It will give you the area on the side pane here, and I'm going to insert data and insert the data like that, and it has just given me the data like this. Now, it's not got it perfect. It's combined these inside one cell and these inside one cell, even though the numbers are in the right places. So it hasn't worked perfectly. I'm going to show you how to get around it. And it's not that difficult. You just go to your table inside Power BI. And I'm going to go to this one. And I'm going to search for grid. 
And I'm just going to turn both of these on and make them black. So it's super obvious where the separators are. Also try and avoid having uh, wrapped text because it doesn't work as well. But Windows Shift S here, I'm going to just draw around it, make sure you collect it. And from here, I'm going to go from picture and picture from clipboard. And here we go. Uh, often it gives you things to review. You can actually edit these one by one if you find an issue. But insert data when you've got those spaces works perfectly well usually with Power BI. So it is a really, really good feature. And I actually quite encourage you to use this. Uh, maybe zoom in as well. So if you zoom in, then you get more likely to be accurate. And it just is so, so much faster than any other method. So other things that you can do from Power BI that is not to do with these tables and the visuals, but to do with the tables over here, is you can actually go to uh, the table and you can choose these dots and you can choose copy table. Then you can go back in here and you can just paste and it will paste all of that, which is nice. You can also do it from Power Query. So if you go to Power Query Editor, you can right click a cell and copy it. You can right click a column and copy it, or I just right click the table and copy entire table. Then you go to Excel and you paste and you get that showing up like this. The, uh, there is a limit on Power Query, which is lower than the limit on Power BI Online. Now, other things you can do because this is a query, you can right click and you can choose to copy a query. And then in Excel, you can choose queries and connections in queries and you can choose paste. And now it's pasted that. Note that if you had any precedent queries, it would paste all of the precedent queries, including parameters. So for example, here I have one that comes from a staging query and I'm going to copy it. And then in Excel, I'm going to paste it. And I get the staging companies, which is not loading, but the companies is loading. You can't edit them then as regular queries. Make sure you have access to the right things, otherwise they won't be as slick. So a couple of things that you need to be aware of settings, let me show you those. So from Power BI online, you can go to settings and admin portal, and this will take you to this. Only the admin is able to do this though, but you need to uh, do a couple of things. So you need to have modern workspaces, choose this one, export to Excel. You need to have certification turned on as well. And you need to have also featured tables turned on for the one that I showed you earlier. So this needs to be on for the whole organization. So on Excel, you do need to have access to Office 365, although any version will do. And then you need to go to File and then Options. And then you need to have the Trust Center and Trust Center Settings. And then Privacy Options and Privacy Settings. And then click on this, Turn on Optional Connected Experiences. So press OK to that. And just to say those admin settings, you only need to do them for experiences that you get from Excel. So for example, the data types on the data tab and the insert pivot table on the insert tab. And if you like that video, then my name is Dave Banam and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Power BI, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using technical workplace that I'm covering on my channel, I love talking about the new stuff, especially the kind of stuff that is a rarely used feature. Thanks for watching.